class is now in session. I am Professor Hockey, and today we're discussing Game 3 of the Sharks Rookie Faceoff Tournament and the final game of this Rookie Faceoff Tournament in which the Sharks took on the Arizona Coyotes and lost by a score of 5-3. to three. This gives them a final record for this tournament of 2-1, and one, which of course at the end of the day does not really matter. This tournament is mostly just to try and test each respective team's prospects and so winning or losing despite the positive or negative feelings that will be associated with that it doesn't really matter at least from a sort of organizational standpoint what does matter is the lineup that the sharks would actually ice for each game and games three lineup was a bit of a surprise for game one the sharks went completely all out all of the players who should be in the lineup were in the lineup this includes players like Eklund, Thrun, Bordalo, Mukamadoulin, all of these guys who you were really excited to see put on a performance. And in that game one, the Sharks, they ended up winning in a relatively dominant fashion. Going into game two, which was the second half of a back-to-back, it wasn't that much of a surprise that the Sharks would take a small step back, bench players like Eklund, give them that day off, and allow these sort of tryout slash free agent players to fill up the lineup and see what they can do. Because of course, you still want to give them a look as, as I mentioned, the Barracuda are an important target for the San Jose Sharks organization to try and improve them and that starts with these young players that they will use to fill up the lineup. But going into game three, I at the very least was expecting that the Sharks would kind of revert back to what they had in game one to give Eklund another game, to give Thrun another game, but instead they actually seemed to lean even slightly more into the game two philosophy and continued to fill out the lineup with these tryout slash borderline players to the point where half of the forwards here are guys who will probably never actually factor into the future of the San Jose Sharks as an NHL team. So definitely a bit surprising and definitely a bit disappointing as well. I think from an organizational standpoint, it's probably an okay idea. At the end of the day, is it really going to matter if Eklund gets a single game in this tournament or two games? Will that really change his development path? Probably not. But it obviously would have been fun to see him play another game, and that's something that didn't end up happening. But let's indeed jump into the lineup anyhow. There were a few players who did play all three games this weekend, and one of those players was Quinton Musty, who in the first couple of games, he was kind of a bit low-key, but still rather solid, just not necessarily making that much of a big splash where you're saying, wow, Musty really stood out in such a positive way. But tonight, I felt he took a step up and was really good for the San Jose Sharks in particular in the first period generally the Sharks as a whole were quite solid in the first period but kind of fell off a bit in the second and third and Musty uh, mirrors that quite well his first period was by far his best period of the entire tournament it was he was just all over the ice one of the best periods that we have seen any of the Sharks players play this weekend not just Musty himself and then he ends up getting a goal as well in the third period which was nice to see so it was kind of a pretty steady like six on ten performance and then Musty caps it off with a good seven or even eight on ten performance right at the end so that is definitely boding well for the Sharks first round draft pick from this past year and we'll see exactly how his development goes over this upcoming season. He was centered by Tristan Robbins, a player who did not play all three games because he missed game two but draws back into the lineup here for game three and puts up a very solid performance. This is the exact type of player that Robbins uh, is expected to be at the NHL level if he of course ever actually ends up making it. There is not going to be anything super spectacular about them. The high level skill isn't really there but he pans out to be a solid fourth line type of center and to be that you want to be a two-way guy who is an extremely reliable type of player and he showed that I felt in tonight's game some solid offensive plays that are going to be able to show up because he is you know better and more developed than most of the other players on the San Jose Sharks roster in this particular tournament and also some solid defensive plays in his own zone so generally a good game from Robbins for sure and then they are finally joined by Ethan Cardwell on this first line another player to have gotten all three games this weekend and he has jumped up in the lineup over those three games starting out on that fourth line in game one eventually making his way to that top line with Robbins and Musty so certainly an impressive rise for Cardwell but on the other hand watching him in tonight's game it felt as though he was a bit less noticeable than in the two previous ones which is quite interesting because of course like I mentioned his first game was on the fourth line so you're not exactly given the time of day from the coach with that much ice time and yet he still managed to sort of leave an impact on that one here tonight 
not as much, I felt like, especially relative to the position he was in. Now, to be fair, the Sharks played a ton of time on the power play in this game. I believe they ended up on the power play eight different times, although technically, if you count the couple of five on threes, it wasn't exactly eight independent times, but the Coyotes took eight minor penalties that gave the Sharks some five-on-four type of advantage. So there wasn't really an opportunity to get that even strength rolling and really allow Cardwell many shifts on this top line. But still, maybe a slightly disappointing end to his tournament that was otherwise quite good. But it's quite clear still that the coaching staff really likes him as a player. They wouldn't have bumped him up the lineup so much if not. So that bodes well for his future with the Barracuda and perhaps eventually with the Sharks as well. Then when it comes to the second line, we have Haltunen also getting all three games this weekend. And unlike Musty, who had that strong finish with this third game, Haltunen kind of just remained very steady throughout all three games. Nothing superbly impressive, nothing all that terrible, which is quite good for such a young player also drafted recently in that 2023 draft. We again saw a couple of decent shots from him, primarily on the power play that didn't exactly go in or necessarily challenge the goaltender a ton but you could tell there's obviously something there a couple of decent looks on passes a nice little break up in the offensive zone to get a decent chance that quickly led to him taking a penalty but I digress so generally a pretty set solid set of games for Haltoon and probably around a six on ten throughout all three of them then on the other side the winger for tonight's game on the second line was Daniil Gushin like Robbins missed game two but did play in both games one and three and I thought Gushin was definitely an above average performance but perhaps that wasn't really enough for the type of player Gushin should be. With Eklund, with Thrun, with Bordelow all out of the lineup, Gushin is perhaps the player in this roster tonight who was actually closest to an NHL spot. You could certainly argue whether or not Robbins is closer or perhaps even Mukama Doolin, but Gushin's definitely right up there with the couple of games that he played at the end of last season with the San Jose Sharks. So you were expecting maybe a slightly more dominant game from him, but I thought still he was touching the puck a lot. He seemed quite comfortable with it, and while he would have had a tendency to slightly over force at times, perhaps taking shots from bad positions or looking to make a pass that definitely shouldn't have happened. I thought all in all a slightly positive game for Gushin, but perhaps could have been a bit more. And then the winger on that line tonight was one of those tryout slash free agent players, Gagnon, who I actually thought had a pretty solid game, which was, I guess, decent to see. Like I mentioned, doesn't really factor into the future of the San Jose Sharks, so not exactly the most interesting player to talk about, but still should be noted for sure to, you know, give credit where credit credit is due, that Gagnon had a couple of nice plays here tonight, and that helps him out for sure. When it comes to the third line, another major player to note before we get to more of those tryout slash free agent players is Brandon Coe, who also has played all three games this weekend, started on the third line, got bumped up to the first line, then got dropped back down to the third line for the game here tonight. I thought Coe, like Musty, actually had a rather solid first period, and while I obviously won't say it was one of the best periods we've seen from any Sharks player this tournament, because Coe is just not really that kind of player, it was probably his best period of the the tournament himself which was nice to see and then the noted decline that went with the rest of the San Jose Sharks roster was not uh, surprising in the slightest so Co, a player who I've been pretty hard on in the past I haven't necessarily been a huge fan of him over this past season and in this rookie tournament as well a decent finish to this tournament that per- could perhaps lead to some better things in the future with the Barracuda and like I said with Cardwell maybe just maybe some moments with the San Jose Sharks as a whole then we have Henneberry as the other winger on this third line a try out slash free agent player he had one good moment in this game which was a very nice back check back in the first period but he was otherwise not super impressive the player who I do want to mention however from this group of players would be Marek who is probably who has probably been the most impressive of the free agent slash tryout players at this tournament. His game two wasn't all that great but he also played in games one and of course here today and I thought very good game, honestly, from Marek, at least relative to what you might expect. This is the only player of the tryout slash free agent players who I could 
perhaps see eventually factoring in with the San Jose Sharks if things go well. It's unlikely to happen, but you never know. Certainly a good enough performance to warrant a slightly closer look, and we'll see if he gets maybe a preseason game or two before getting sent back down. And then when it comes to the fourth line, Allison, McEachern, Vincent, each of them had actually honestly a couple of good moments in this game. Vincent, I thought, actually was the best of the three of them. But once again, like it has been for these past couple of rookie faceoff tournament games, nothing really to write home about, nothing super major. When it comes to the defensive pairings, uh, we have, of course, leading the way, Mook Hamadoulin getting his third and final game of the tournament, so he plays all weekend. And this was a relatively quiet game for Mook Hamadoulin, but perhaps that's not the worst thing in the world. The thing that we really noticed, or I really noticed, through those first couple of games of the tournament is that he was extremely Brent Burns-esque, a very loud player, to, so to speak, on the ice. Not in a literal sense, but in a sort of figurative sense, I guess you could say really showing off in the offensive zone while having some really awful defensive zone giveaways here tonight he seemed to be able to avoid those egregious mistakes very very easily but didn't necessarily shine in an extremely effective way offensively either so I do think like Gushin this was an above average game for Mukama Doolin and it's nice to see him get a game where he kind of irons out those defensive mistakes and plays rather steady but maybe expecting slightly more from this type of player. He was joined on his defensive pairing by Frisch, who was playing in last game on the third defensive pairing, actually gets bumped up here, and I thought he had a pretty good game, nothing amazing, also part of the tryout slash free agent types of players, so not necessarily a huge comment to be had. On the second pairing, we of course have Kinal, who, like Frisch, that borderline type of player, not super interesting to comment on. But then he also has LaRock. Now, LaRock did not play Game 2, did play Game 1. And in Game 1, I mentioned that he may very well have been the Sharks' best defenseman in that particular game. And so how did he live up to those lofty expectations here in Game 3? Well, not so much. I felt as though there was definitely a bit of a fall-off from LaRock from Game 1 to Game 3 which was definitely slightly disappointing to say. Of course, with LaRock, it is coming with a small grain of salt because, as we know, last year he dealt with a pretty significant injury, and so it was a question of whether or not he'd be able to shake off the rust coming into this tournament, and that was a very surprising, strong Game 1 for him for a player who would have to shake off the rust. This, what we saw in Game 3, was probably what you may have expected to see from him in that Game 1 because there definitely were some cobwebs to shake off, not necessarily an amazing game for him not terrible but still kind of five on ten I would say and then when it comes to the third defensive pairing perhaps the player who I thought stood out very well in this game on defense uh, maybe not more than let's say musty on forward but on defense definitely was Cagnoni he gets his second game of the tournament as well was a late uh, step into game one we didn't really appear on that pre-game lineup but eventually actually ended up dressing and looked pretty good especially as that game went on and he was given more ice time but here tonight I felt as though he took over the game of a bit more had some really strong shifts especially in the earlier parts of the game like is sort of the theme here tonight for most of these Sharks players and generally did spark a lot of hope for Cagnoni moving on into these next couple of years as a defenseman and especially the defenseman his size you're not necessarily expecting him to make an impact with with the San Jose Sharks within like the next 365 days you know the next hockey season but perhaps two three years down the line he could be a real draft steal for the San Jose Sharks coming out of the fourth round because the talent does seem to be there even though this is a very small sample size and then finally we have the goaltender Mason Bopit so the Sharks brought three goalies to this tournament all three of them got to play a game Krona uh, Romanov and now Bopit uh, he obviously lets in five goals, which is never really going to look good, though it does fit in with some of the San Jose Sharks goaltending that we saw this past season, so perhaps maybe it's something that they are used to. And a couple of these goals, you were probably thinking that Bopit probably would want back. So not exactly the best game 
definitely falls a step below what Krona put up in the previous one, which was very impressive, and kind of finds himself in that same area as what Romanov put off. So if I was going to power rank these goaltenders after this tournament, it's definitely Krona leading the way. I'd probably put Romanov second and then Bopit, but very, very close between those last two. Generally, the Sharks don't exactly have the most bright goaltending prospect pool, and in this particular tournament, it's hard to really say if anyone kind of made such an impact that you're thinking like this is the future goaltender of the San Jose Sharks because again the sample sizes are small but you never know but that will do it for this review the Sharks will be back in action at some point in the preseason which will start in a few days while the training camp actually opens in a couple of days preseason will start a few days after that and as I said the rookie tournament is not just a great time to watch some of these Sharks depth players and see how they line up against each other but it's also a mark for the start of the season that we of course are all excited to see from a shark's perspective class dismissed